I'm going to complete what my colleague, Professor Mohammed Hassanin, uh, has said about the ESD ADA guidelines 2022 and management of high risk group. Before uh, 2016, guidelines and societies were only concentrating and focusing on glycemic control in type 2 for prevention of diabetes complications. But since 2016, guidelines and societies have been recommending the use of SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists for their metabolic cardiovascular uh, benefits and kidney benefits. In 2016, the European Society of Cardiology and Canadian Diabetes focused on cardiovascular and mortality benefits in patients with type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. In 2018, the American Diabetes Association started to focus on benefits in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and chronic heart failure in patients with type 2 diabetes. 2019, the EASD and the European Society of Cardiology had focused on kidney benefits in patients with type 2 diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and diabetic kidney disease. 2020 American Diabetes Association was talking about independence of hemoglobin A1C, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, heart failure, or coronary kidney disease predominate in patients with type 2 diabetes and how to prevent these complications and comorbidities. 2021, again, the European Society of Cardiology focused on cardiovascular and mortality benefits in type 2 diabetes with high risk of cardiovascular events or in patients with HEFREF. In 2022, we're going to see what's the new for 2022 by the American Association of uh, Diabetes and the European Association for the Study of Diabetes. And this is the ADA EASD consensus recently published about the decision cycle for patient-centered glycemic management in type 2 diabetes. And the goals of care was to prevent complication and to optimize the quality of life and to assess key person characteristics in each patient, like the presence of comorbidities, like uh, CVD, uh, CKD, or heart failure, and to consider specific factors impacting the choice of treatment, like the presence of these complications or comorbidities, and to take care of the patient well-being and to support the patient and to review and agree on management plan by the patient. This is very important, and this was repeatedly highlighted in the recently published guidelines. Uh, this is the AGA 2022 standards of medical care. There was um, uh, this um, uh, roadmap to reduce diabetes complications by lifestyle modification together with glycemic management, blood pressure management, lipid management, and to use agents with cardiovascular and kidney benefits. This is AG 2022. And for patients with type 2 diabetes, lifestyle modification, and to check if these patients are having atherosclerotic cardiovascular uh, disease or high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or the presence of heart failure or CKD or none. Then this was very much highlighted and which medications are used for each type of patient. And this is a change in AGA between 2021 and 2022. And the first line therapy in 2021 was to use metformin and comprehensive lifestyle change, including weight management and physical activity. But in 2022, this statement was mentioned. Other medications like GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitors 
with or without metformin use can be used uh, on glycemic needs, taking care of high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in certain patients or the presence of heart failure or CKG. This is the consensus uh, of AGA together with ESD uh, published in August 2022. And patients were either having atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, like a recent myocardial infarction, um, a stroke, any revascularization procedure, or uh, conditions like transient ischemic attack, unstable angina, amputation, or uh, symptomatic or asymptomatic coronary artery disease, or patients having indicators of high risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, like those above the age of 55, with one or two other uh, risk factors, including obesity, hypertension, smoking, dyslipidemia, or albuminuria, and patients with heart failure or patients with CKG. And for patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or indicators of high risk uh, for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, um, the first line therapy should include GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT-2 inhibitor with proven effect on cardiovascular benefit. And for those with heart failure, the most important medication to be given is uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. And for those with CKG patients, we're going to check later um, which to use very shortly. And for other types of patients, I'm sure Professor Muhammad uh, has covered uh, very uh, nicely. And these are the medications for lowering uh, glucose. These are the summary of characteristics. And let me highlight on two uh, groups of medications, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists. And these are the SGLT2 inhibitors. They are having intermediate to high efficacy with uh, no hypoglycemia, and they cause in intermediate weight loss. And uh, the main action of SGLT2 inhibitors is reduction of renal tubular glucose uh, reabsorption. And they are having importance and benefits uh, in lowering uh, the glucose, um, the blood glucose. And to lower uh, GFR, they can be used to prevent deterioration of renal function. And of course, they are having benefit on maces especially canagliflozin and impagliflozin, benefit on heart failure. All the group is having benefit on heart failure. The progression of diabetic kidney disease, the benefits are evident in canagliflozin, dabagliflozin, and impagliflozin. And this is the GLP-1 receptor agonist, and they are having high to very high efficacy with no hypoglycemia, weight loss, is evident in this group. Some of them are used only in treatment of um, obesity without the presence of diabetes. For heart failure, they are neutral. And can we use these medications in our countries? We know that GLP-1 receptor agonists are very expensive for our patients, but we are lucky to have uh, SGLT2 inhibitors with reasonable price and can be used with most of our patients. Uh, this is uh, the use of uh, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists in patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Like we said, we are going to use GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitor with proven cardiovascular benefit. And if the hemoglobin A1C is still above target, we can use vice versa. If we are using GLP-1 receptor agonist, we uh, can use SGLT2 inhibitor and vice versa. For heart failure, SGLT2 inhibitors remain to be the most effective and uh, good evidence uh, in treatment of heart failure and prevention of heart failure.
in patients with chronic kidney disease, according to the recently published guidelines, uh, we can use maximally tolerated dose of ACE or ARBs in the beginning and to add SGLT2 inhibitor with primary evidence to reduce chronic kidney disease. And we can use them if the estimated GFR is 20 uh, milli or above, and it should be uh, continued when initiated until the initiation of dialysis or transplantation. If we can choose the SGLT2 inhibitor for any reason, we can use a GLP-1 receptor agonist with proven cardiovascular benefit. Again, this is uh, the goals of care and to prevent complication and to optimize the quality of life and to assess the key person characteristics. If the patient is having uh, CVG or CKG or heart failure, then uh, how to uh, use these medications to prevent and uh, modify the disease course. And this is the cycle of uh, how to take care of our patients. And uh, which medication to use in each of these uh, disease entities and uh, complications and comorbidities. And this is very important to ensure the strategy in place to detect and optimize management of cardiovascular risk factors. To, uh, to target cardiovascular risk factors, screening and surveillance, starting from the onset of diabetes or diagnosis of diabetes, and to uh, reduce the blood pressure or to use blood pressure uh, lowering medication if there's hypertension, and to use lipid lowering medication, whether for primary or secondary prevention, the use of antithrombotic agent and uh, smoking cessation. So this is the consensus recommendations in patients with heart failure, CKG, established cardiovascular disease or multiple risk factors for cardiovascular disease the decision is to use GLP-1 receptor agonist if the patient can afford, because we all know that they are very expensive, or an SGLT2 inhibitor with proven benefit, independent of the background use of metformin. This is a change from the previous recommendations published until 2021. Then we can use these medications independent of the use of metformin. And in people with heart failure, CKG, established cardiovascular disease or multiple risk factors of cardiovascular disease, the decision to use GLP-1 receptor agonists or SGLT2 inhibitors with proven evidence in, in this uh, benefit on cardiovascular disease or CKG, and it should be used independent of the baseline hemoglobin A1C. Again, these are conclusions and recommendations in patients with CKG, SGLT2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist reduce the risk of MACE inhibitors. Uh, and in people with CKG, SGLT2 inhibitors also reduce risk of heart failure and kidney outcomes, including end stage uh, kidney disease. And this is uh, a new, um, in, uh, newly introduced uh, information. And in people with CKG and estimated GFR 20 milli, we can use SGLT2 inhibitor with proven benefit, and it should be initiated to reduce the risk of maize, heart failure, and kidney outcome. And if such treatment is not tolerated or Contraindicated, we can use a GLP-1 receptor agonist with proven cardiovascular uh, outcome. This is the European Society of uh, Cardiology, and for the first time, we have evidence from several cardiovascular outcomes that 
uh, indicate cardiovascular benefit from the use of SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists in patients with cardiovascular disease or at very high risk of cardiovascular disease. And let me uh, finish with this important 2022 KDIGO guidelines recommending comprehensive treatment of patients with diabetes and, uh, and uh, CKD, uh, chronic kidney disease, to reduce the risk of kidney disease and progression of cardiovascular disease. Uh, for some patients, we use the antiplatelet therapies, and for most patients, we use RAS blockage or SGLT2 inhibitors or both. For all patients, we use lipid management, glycemic control. These are needed lipid management, glycemic control, blood pressure control, smoking, cessation, exercise, and nutrition. And SGLT2 inhibitors in combination with, with metformin should be used as a first-line therapy for patients with type 2 diabetes and CKG. We start with physical activity, nutrition, guidance, and weight loss. And we can use metformin until the estimated GFR is less than 45, then we reduce the dose. And if estimated GFR is less than 30, we discontinue the metformin. And if dialysis starts, we uh, discontinue metformin. And for SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, if uh, GFR is less than 20, we don't initiate SGLT2 inhibitors, then we can use them uh, if the GFR is above 20. And if dialysis starts, we should discontinue. And uh, to use GLP-1 receptor agonists, they are preferred. And uh, GPP-4 inhibitor uh, with safe profile on uh, kidney disease or insulin sulfonylurea TCDs or alpha-glucosidase inhibitor when needed. Let me thank you very much.